Hi Taurus, this is your horoscope for July 2017. Thank you for joining me. It's really nice to be with you today. Now, from the 24th of June until the 20th of August, we have the Sun, which represents your identity, conjuncting Mars. Mars is the archetypal male principle and it's what you want in astrology. Okay, so those two sit together, a conjunction means that the energies blend together and they sit together in your third house. So for the month of uh, July, you're going to find that you're much more emotional than you usually would be. And you're also much more willing and you have an actual desire and a drive to communicate emotionally. So Taurus, you really have to watch out here at, in July that you don't reveal every skeleton that you've got in the closet to just anybody, okay? It's really important that you are careful in choosing who you, who you share things with. If you have an emotional problem, if you've got some sort of issue and you feel that if you share it with another human being, it will help you, make sure you're choosing the right person because often what can happen is that you confide in someone and then when there's a fight or something, that person will then use that information you gave them in that intimate moment and use it against you, okay? So you will have a strong desire to get some something off your chest. So either it's communicating with someone you really do trust or communicating with a higher power or a family member you trust. There's going to be a strong desire to connect and to share your feelings. From the 5th of July, Venus, your ruler, the planet of love and beauty and creativity, moves into Gemini and it stays in Gemini all month. Okay, so Venus has been in your sign of Taurus and Venus was very sensual and it really worked for you and you probably felt that uh, you were able to express your love very well here in June. With Venus going into Gemini in your second, it becomes much more interested in communicating. It, it, the pace quickens and Venus loves to communicate now. She really wants to express ideas and try different things and experiment. And she's in your second house of money, Taurus. So if you start to communicate about the things that interest you and you walk through doorways, you, you check out different things that that really interest you, that, that sparks something off in you, if you follow that up, if you pursue that, it may lead to something that has a positive impact on you financially further down the road. So Venus in Gemini here for the whole month, you should use that as research for what is it that I love to do work-wise, how, who, uh, who's in my vicinity, who's making a lot of money in a certain job, and do I like that? Do I want to emulate that? Do some research about how you can make money in a way that is enjoyable to you. Venus will help you discover that this month. On the 7th of July, Mercury, the communication planet, moves into Leo. Okay, and it goes into Leo in your fourth house. So Mercury, the communication planet in Leo, is very kind of public. It's very, it's very much center stage. That in your fourth house means that you will want to be center stage. You will want attention from people who you love. You will want attention from those nearest and dearest to you. And you will want kind of applause and you will want recognition. If other people are busy, uh, if, if you haven't really done anything that's worthy of applause or recognition, and if you don't, if that doesn't happen, you, will, you may get frustrated. So be aware of that, that Taurus, with this Mercury moving into Leo here, from the 7th until the 26th, you will want to have recognition and you may be a little bit more needy in that way that you usually are. So if you want recognition, then do something that really will get you that recognition. Remember Venus is optimistic there in your second house. So try something new, maybe try some sort of public performance. 
that will certainly get you the recognition of the public. But there is something during this period where you want to be in the public eye that, that Mercury and that Venus, they sextile each other. So for you to do something creative publicly is really going to fulfill the needs and the demands of that Mercury at the very bottom of your chart. And if you don't express yourself publicly, if you're not seen by the public, you'll get irritated. You'll feel like something's missing. Mercury stays in Leo until the 26th, and then it goes into Virgo in your fifth house. And on the 26th of July, the focus is really going to shift. You're not going to be interested in uh, getting attention or um, performing publicly. What you'll do then from the 26th of July onwards is really try and make sense of your relationships, what works, what doesn't, and you become some, somewhat of a, of a research scientist when it comes to relationships. You try and understand um, how to make your relationships work and you almost become a student of relationships later on in the month, okay? So use this period from the 7th until the 26th to do something public, to put yourself in the spotlight. If you've never done that before, try it. It'll be a, an amazing experience. On the 9th of July until the 26th of July, we have Mars squaring Uranus. Now, Mars conjuncts the Sun, remember, and it's in your third house of communication so there's this strong desire to communicate emotionally with the connection with Uranus now in Aries Uranus is the planet of rebellion and eccentricity and it's in your 12th house of spirituality so it gives you great spiritual strength this is a danger for you as well because from the 9th until the 26th you will feel almost invincible and you will feel like I can share my f secrets and my demons and my things with other people. I, no one's going to be able to touch me. No one will harm me. Okay. But let's say you're a politician and this is an extreme example. I know I use extreme examples to get my points across. Let's say you're a politician. Okay. And you just happen to have had, um, relations with um, a sex worker last week, okay? You're really ashamed of yourself, you don't usually do that kind of thing, um, and you decide to tell your friend who also happens to work for a newspaper, <laughs> okay? That friend then has a huge scoop and prints that about what you've done, and you've really got yourself into a situation where you ruined your career because you've had to share something, and you felt invincible. You felt like, no one can bring me down, and I can share whatever I like. That scenario would be a huge scandal. Your political career may or may not survive, but you can see in the example that you are not invincible, and the information that you share with other people, really be careful about what you're sharing and with who you're sharing it. On the 9th of July as well, we have the full moon in Capricorn and I will make a separate video on this because the full moons can be quite complicated. The full moon happens for you Taurus in the 9th house, okay? And the full moon in Capricorn is a completion point. It's when the moon is kind of um, releasing all of its energy and it's showering us with, with this Capricorn energy. It's got Pluto on top of it in your ninth and this full moon for you will urge you to change your environment a little bit. It'll urge you to travel, to explore something new, to transform your physical environment, to transform your physical location. You, will, you may even have a desire to move. You may have a desire to a change where you live and you're going to have a huge emotional response to these things. It is a good time for you to um, delve into the emotional side of things now and to say what are my hopes and dreams for the future in terms of where I live, what skills I have and how I want to grow, what skills I want to learn, how do I want to develop. So those two areas, moving and work, learning skills, ask yourself, 
where do I see myself in a year from now, in five years from now, in 10 years from now? And really try and make a plan as to what you want to change in future during this full moon period, because it will provide you with actual concrete ideas that you can implement to make those changes. So that energy continues. You'll be working with all of the energy that I've mentioned up until now, until the 21st, when something else occurs that you need to deal with, and that is Mars moving into Leo. Now, Mars has been in Cancer in your third house. Mars now moves into Leo in your fourth house. So you're going to stop having this desire to communicate so emotionally. And what happens is that you start to have a desire to have fun and to enjoy the company of family members, your nearest and dearest, your loved ones. It may even be um, a response to what's happened earlier in the month where you trusted someone and they betrayed you. You may now be kind of going back to basics, going back to the people you can really trust and re-evaluating re things possibly for the future. Okay, if there's anger or resentment around this, don't, don't go into that, you know? We all make mistakes in life. Beating yourself up about this isn't going to undo the mistake. So really look to the future and see how you can how you can heal this, how you can learn from this, and how you can move forward. On the 23rd of July, we have the new moon in Leo, and again, I'll make a separate video on this, but this pulls energy into your fourth house, so this will really make the focus now, this last, the 23rd of July and the last week of July, all about family and the focus of really being nurtured and having fun with family members and really enjoying kind of private time with your family. So that's what I get for you in July. If you'd like a private reading with me, then please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. What I can do is I can drop your, your birth chart by getting your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. I can then draw up the chart and we can look at what's coming up for you in, for the rest of the year and beyond in terms of career, love, relationships, spirituality, health, anything at all. And I can also look at your natal chart to see what your life purpose is, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and what your vocational aptitudes are, all of those things. It is a blueprint of your soul. So if you'd like me to have a look at any of that, get in touch via the website. If you like my videos and you'd like to support me, then please hit that subscribe button and I'll speak to you next month.